This is Twit. Magic is the key word when it comes to iPad accessories, one might say. Uh, you know, look, we've talked a lot, I think, in the past about iPhone accessories. We've talked, um, I'm mean, almost primarily iPhone accessories, and I thought it would be great for us to have a little conversation about the different iPad devices, or rather the iPad gadgets and accessories that we use. Um, and it kicks off, I think, with an obvious one, but one that really can transform the experience that you have with your iPad. Uh, and it's the Magic Keyboard. Now, of note, adding a Magic Keyboard to any iPad purchase is automatically going to boop, 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 raise the price quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But what you yeah. get, get when you get an iPad, uh, a Magic Keyboard for your iPad is a keyboard a trackpad, and an extra port for charging your iPad while you use mm -hmm. the port on the iPad itself for other things. So yeah. it's quite the device. Oh, as well as protection, of course, for the iPad yeah. uh, as well. And I think all of those are reasons why uh, the Magic Keyboard is so great. Can we show the, um, the page, Kevin, of the Magic Keyboard? So... Apple has slowly but surely, I think, improved on the design of the Magic Keyboard over time. It comes in black and white, just those two colors. But um, with it, you get a really nice, arguably kind of hefty, but uh, powerful case that has all of those features and that functionality built in. And now, more than ever, with iPad OS 26 right around the corner and the uh, improvement that we're seeing to the iPad, what you've got is a really powerful little touch screen computer. Yes. Yeah. And I personally think that the keyboard and trackpad as well that you get with a lot of the Magic Keyboards, um, or I think all of Apple's keyboards now. There there was one for a while that didn't have a trackpad on it, but I think they all do. It's honestly a, a game-changing experience. Um, you can hold down the command key inside of any app, and it will tell you the shortcuts that are available in that app so that you can figure out how to make the most of it. Um, but what I also like is it means that you have better angles for typing, which you want a relatively flat surface for, at looking, which you want a more vertical surface for. And so you're not trying to put your iPad at like a weird 45-ish degree angle that is a halfway house between both. And it's not very comfortable for typing, nor is it very comfortable for looking at your screen. Um, and also um, your screen isn't 50% keyboard anymore. Like that, that is just exactly. a game changer right there. Especially if you're on one of the smaller iPads, like the nine inches, even honestly, like Apple don't make a key magic keyboard for the iPad mini, but there are magic keyboard alike knockoffs on Amazon. I've purchased one before and I quite liked it. Um, but you know, having that extra space back by not having a keyboard on the screen and the ability, even if the only shortcuts that you memorize on your iPad are command space to open spotlight, Command tab to switch apps and command H to go home to your home screen. So H for home screen. If you only ever use those three, okay, maybe control C, uh, command C, command V for copy and paste as well. Um, and command X, which is the scissors for cutting. Uh, but you know, like if you just use those, you will have a massively elevated iPad experience that is a big game changer. Like, you know, I have my dad using his iPad significantly more since I gave him a keyboard. Like, his iPad usage oh, has yeah, literally yeah, yeah. quadrupled. Like, he was barely using it before, just mostly using it, honestly, as a digital photo frame, which seemed like a massive waste of an iPad. Now he's using it so much more because he can see as well as type. And also, the keys are always in the same place. Uh, and this is one of my pet peeves on the iPhone mic. I don't know if it bugs you as well. Uh, getting the wrong keyboard for a field or getting the keyboard that you don't expect. So it's a number field, but they've given you the number and symbol keyboard. 
So all the numbers are in a row across the top. Or they give you just the regular keyboard. Or they don't give you the email keyboard, yes. like the digital keyboard. Oh. It changes depending on what it is that you're typing, where it is that you're typing, and so on. So sometimes you get the app. Sometimes you get a .com button. Sometimes you don't get a .com button. You get a .co.uk button, which is possibly the most useless button in the world. And I really wish it could be .com without my keyboard being American. Um, mm -hmm. Having a physical keyboard completely eliminates that. So especially actually, like even if you are like just going like, uh, okay, you sold me on a keyboard, but oh my God, $300, $350, this is expensive. Logitech, like a keys to go, something like that. I have an older model keys to go actually here on my desk. I'm just pulling it out. Um, like this came with a little iPad stand so you can just slot your iPad in there like a Logitech Bluetooth keyboard, anything like that. Any keyboard is an upgrade for your iPad if you don't have one, even if you only use it at home. Um, like if you can get one with a function row, like this keyboard has here at the top. So it's got buttons for going home, controlling the brightness on your screen, uh, showing and hiding the keyboard, opening spotlight, media controls, volume controls, a lock button, um, and things like that. You know, like, yeah, there's like a keyboard is a game changer. I definitely recommend it. Um, and also, as Micah said, the extra charging port on the Magic Keyboard, I use that a lot because I like to plug like external drives in. Like I have like four terabyte teeny tiny SSDs that I plug in, which, or I plug in a Raspberry Pi because I need a server because I'm that kind of weird nerd. But even if you're just plugging in like a memory card from your camera, um, to get your pictures up so that you can see them on a much bigger screen. Or you're plugging your camera in to use it as a webcam. If your battery is running low, you don't want to have to make it an either or situation. You don't have to buy a hub if you've got a magic keyboard. Admittedly, you can get like an anchor hub way cheaper, but you know, it, it's nice to have options. That uh, what you said earlier about your uh, father using the device more now that it has a keyboard. That is the same mm -hmm. experience that it was for my grandma. Uh, when I gave her an iPad with a keyboard, she it completely replaced her laptop. And that idea of getting the keyboard out of the way and physical, I think both play into it, which makes it so great. Um, now, I will also mention, if you yes. have a keyboard and it has, like this Logitech here, media keys on it, especially if it's a Bluetooth keyboard, if you're traveling and you're using your iPad as your mini home cinema and you've got a Bluetooth keyboard, home cinema on the desk or like just a bit further away from you, keys to control the media and the volume right in front of you so that they're within finger reach. That's a game changer. Uh, I actually have a Satechi Bluetooth remote control, which I use for that a lot of the time because that's really nice, like especially if you're like snuggled up in a blanket on a plane. Uh, but you could use a Bluetooth keyboard for it too. Hey, if you liked that clip, well, there's so much more to get by joining Club Twit. You can watch all of iOS Today, where we cover all things iOS, tvOS, HomePod OS, watchOS, and so much more. It's all the apps, all the tips and tricks, and everything with Rosemary Orchard and me, Micah Sargent. Join Club Twit at twit.tv slash club twit to see all of iOS Today.